games. And our presenting sponsor of Loyola basketball is PNC Bank. PNC is the official sponsor of Loyola Athletics. And we are underway. The tap controlled by the Flames. Big key today, Andy, for Loyola is going to be their transition defense. That's something they stress in practice the last couple of days. They want UIC to have to run their offense and not get those easy buckets in transition because the Flames are fast. And a turnover of travel. As Dominic Matthews, sophomore from Chicago, turns it over, so the Ramblers will have their first crack at it here on offense. Uh, Ramblers had a tough loss at Boise State the other day, but that was like, I believe Porter Moser was joking when he said it was their 15th time zone in five different days. <laughs> it was a long trip for the Ramblers. They were out of gas, looking for a much uh, better performance today, and Mor Moser thinks his guys are ready. He likes the way the ball is moving. Marcus Towns all the way in, got blocked by the rim. And now Matthews will take it out for the Flames. Quick pass ahead to Blump. And he faked the three. Flames will be without Tarkus Ferguson, as we mentioned. Pretty much their lead ball handler. So we'll see how they adjust to that here this afternoon. There's a steal. Custer all by himself. So Custer second on the team at 13.9 points per game. Has the first bucket. And now Bowen will pick it up. And Matthews launching a long three. That's way off the mark. Jackson there for the rebound. I think the Ramblers are going to be in good shape again if the Flames have to run through their offense. That's the big thing here today. And they're going to sacrifice things, the Ramblers, Andy. They're going to sacrifice some offensive rebounding opportunities to make sure that everyone gets back on defense. That's the big point of emphasis. Nice little bounce pass there from Crutwig. Acrobatic score for Towns. Well, Towns has done a heck of a job to transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson, Andy. He played in an NCAA tournament game two years ago. Had a good game that afternoon as well. He's been a huge addition to this team. Scored 13 against Florida Gulf Coast. And that aforementioned NCAA game. And now Dixon pulls up for a three and hits. To Kembe Dixon working his way back again from that torn ACL. It was right around this time one year ago and it's remarkable that he's even out there playing at the level he is Andy it's such a brutal injury it normally takes people a year just to go back to feeling normal so this is uh, to be expected his early struggles but good start for him and a miss by Godwin Bowen and now Towns will bring it across Ramblers early four to three lead and Jackson not afraid to hoist from three and hits. He's shooting a cool 50% from behind the arc. He is the perfect Porter Moser player. A smaller guy that has very good post moves inside, knows the angles, but can step out and shoot. He was a big addition to the team last year as a Juco transfer. Porter Moser explained it to us too. I mean, his theory, another turnover there about... Recruiting those undersized guys. <laughs> we were surprised that he, he's got Cameron Crutwig. Like how, what are you doing with a traditional big man on your roster? I think he was surprised, too. <laughs> and here's still a good job there by Ingram. Keeps the dribble. Floats one up off the glass and no good. And here's that transition we spoke of. Blount moving it back quickly. Matthews lining up a three. That's good. And that will not make Porter Moser happy because, again, he wants those guys to make sure they get back. And that's exactly what UIC wants to do. They want up-tempo, Andy. They want to use their speed. And that was certainly a sequence that Steve McClain has to like. 7-6 Loyola. Almost four minutes gone by. Nice move by Crutwig inside. Had the shot blocked, though, by Odiasi. And back come the Flames. Nice little duck under move there by Dikembe Dixon. Not hitting the shot, but a foul coming up. And it looks to go against Andre Jackson. And that'll bring us to our first time. So, so far today, three turnovers for the Flames. Something to keep a close eye on. And go along with just one assist. By the way, we should mention, too, on that Odiasi block, he now has at least one block in 19 of his last 20 games. And is creeping up the all-time blocks list. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Second all-time at UIC. First free throw good to tie the game. And one of two 
for Dikembe Dixon. And here is Clayton Custer. Lucas Williamson has checked in for the first time for the Ramblers. Number one in white. Extra pass made. Ingram three rounded out. And Odiasi claims the glass. And now Bowen into the front court here for the Flames. Clock got open for a minute. Inside they go against Odiasi. Triple teamed. And a shot way off the mark there. And a rebound captured by the Ramblers. Here's Williamson, the man benefiting most from Richardson's absence. Oh, shoot that! Nice cross lane pass right there. And now Williamson will line up a three and hit it. They are very happy, Andy, with Lucas Williamson. You mentioned it with Ben Richardson going down for the time being. Williamson's the one that's really stepped up and made the most of those available minutes. His minutes have increased triple since the first three games. He's averaging just over eight, and now he's averaging just under 27. And a travel. And that'll send it right on back to the Ramblers. Christian Negron will come in, as will Bruno Skokna. As Jackson and Kretwig take a seat, going a little smaller this time down the floor. Bruno Skokna is in really good shape, Andy. He dropped about 15 pounds from last year. He was a nice player in his first year for the Ramblers. Good shooter from the outside. But, again, you can tell a lot of these guys and Krutwig, who we mentioned before, the freshman, mm -hmm. he came in here at 290. He's now at 260. We've got to get on that diet. <laughs> we need to talk to Dave Vitel, who's the uh, strength and conditioning coordinator here at Loyola. He'll take good care of us. 14-38 left to go here in this first half. The Ramblers have a 10-7 lead. Oh! Custer, cross-court pass was picked off. Here comes Dixon ahead against Skokna. All the way in. Layup is good. Boy, what a move right there. What a finish by, by Dixon. I mean, this guy two years ago was the Horizon League Freshman Player of the Year, Andy. So the talent is not the issue. It's just the chemistry. But so far today, that's not been a problem. Ramblers with a one-point lead in the ball. 10-9. 14-13 remains here in the first. Custer, baseline to baseline, now to Williamson, open three, good again. The Ramblers out to a four-point lead at 13 to nine. Just under 14 minutes left to go here in this first half. Ball tipped out of bounds. And they say it was last off Custer. Now, Custer pleading his case, but the official does not seem moved by that argument. He turned a deaf ear. <laughs> That's saying it nicely. Yes. All right, son, just keep going. Let's yeah, go. Come let's, on, let's UIC just, ball. Let's just play here. <laughs> Clint Robinson has checked in for the first time here for the Flames, and now Dixon with a long two is good. Well, Dixon is feeling it today, and I'll tell you, he has not met a shot that he does not like. I mean, he definitely likes to put it up, so you know that the Ramblers have to identify that he's got the hot hand. they got to do something about it to stop it. 13-11, to 11, Loyola the lead in the ball. 13-28 to go here in the first. Skokna. Williamson drives baseline. And he was cut off there. Seven on the shot clock. Now six to shoot. Skokna all the way inside. Layup missed. Rebound tap no good. Rebound foul is no good, but a foul right at the shot clock horn. And Steve McClain saying, didn't the shot clock expire? Yeah, he might have a point there. Now here is where, in a situation like this, Andy, where it all breaks down, and the shot clock is winding down. That's where you miss a Milton Doyle mm -hmm. because that's exactly what he did the last couple of years. He was so athletic, and he could see over the screens, too, on those ball screens. He was a guy that could really salvage it when the shot clock was expiring. They don't quite have that player, but good hustle to get the rebound and get to the line. So the officials went over to look at it, and they said that there was two seconds left on the shot clock, and they also say that there's two shots coming. In the act of shooting, Christian Negron, the freshman from Elgin. And that one's way too strong and missed wide right. You're used to that, wide right, covering the Bears as much as oh, you Oh, stop it. Give me a day of, of, <laughs> of peace and rest. Sorry about that. I'm enjoying working with you so much that you had to go there. <laughs> Got to get you back in that mindset, you know. A <laughs> couple of misses here from Negron. And now Adi in to the game. And an offensive foul coming up. Clint Robinson will get the foul called on him. 13.05 left to go here in the first. 13-11. to Loyola has the lead. 
Some token pressure here from Bowen against Clayton Custer. He'll bring it across now. Just under 13 minutes to play in the first half. Good defense here by Bowen. Mm -hmm. Andre Jackson is checked back in, 24 and white. Sets the screen for Williamson. Eight on the shot clock. Skoke up. Well, let us go to Jackson. A three is good. What a oh. ball fake. What a way to shake the defender off of Andre Jackson. He is a very skilled player. You'll watch him again with the moves and the fundamentals. He's very well coached as well. 16 to 11, Loyola in front. Now Adi down the lane, lost the handle. It's stripped and stolen by Skokna. Good pass ahead to Towns. Custer spots up three, short. And the rebound contested and taken by Robinson for the Flames. And now Dixon, step back three is no good. Off the front iron. And the ball will roll out of bounds and it will go to the Ramblers. And it will lead us to an official's timeout here on the floor. 11.59 left to go. Andre. Ramblers have the better of the play early on here, leading 16 to 11. Andy Mazur, Jeff Dickerson back with you inside the Gentile Arena. Here in Chicago, Rogers Park. Jumps out to me, Andy, that UIC already has turned the ball over six times to just two assists. Now, to their credit, they're only down five. But if that trend continues, it's going to be hard to win a game when you turn the ball over that much to so few assists. UIC trying to ratchet up its defense. Quick passing and a nice shot of opportunity there for Williams. He's fouled, taking a three. That was a veteran fall by Lucas Williamson. I'm very impressed by the freshman. That's how you do it, Andy. <laughs> you know, a little bit of contact, that's okay. You fall down, you get the ball, you're shooting three. That's three. Veteran move. What a great extra pass made by Krutwig inside as well. Porter yes. Moser talking to us about Krutwig again before the game, and we were kind of joking that he's never really had a center since he's been here, and it's been seven years. Well, I, I love what he said about Krutwig. The guy just plays with incredible enthusiasm. He's the first guy to shake your hand in the shooting line. Um, and, that's, and that's really for a freshman big man to be that way. Guards are usually the ones that are the more vocal type players, but his future seems really bright, and, you know, he'll get, he'll get in better shape from year one to year two. There's no doubt about it, so very impressive. So is Williamson. Nine points early on here. And an eight-point Ramblers lead at 19 to 11. Now Dixon. Baseline to baseline pass is out of bounds. And, J.D., you've seen enough basketball to know that when your team's struggling, somebody tries to do too much. And that's what's happening right there with Dixon. But it, it just goes to show how when UIC has to run their sets, and you force them to run their stuff. Beautiful backdoor pass. Give and go right there. Now the Ramblers, when they get set up and run their sets, it's a completely different looking style of offense. Inside pass deflected by Crutwig and out of bounds off of UIC. It'll be Rambler basketball. The active hands of Crutwig. At this rate, UIC is going to turn the ball over 20 times at least, Andy. We're getting to that point now. Yes, we are. That right there was number eight. Number eight already. And how about this? In the first half, Lucas Williamson already has matched his career high with 11 points. Last year when these two teams played, the Ramblers had about a 13-point lead in the second half. And what Steve McClain did was just junk the offense and just have his guys straight drive to the basket. Had a couple of guys just beat him off the drive. And it actually worked, and they got back into the game. We'll see what McLean does this afternoon if things continue to kind of go along the same path. So Matthews will pick up the foul. Steve McLean in his third year at the helm of the Flames. Had the CBI tournament appearance last year. And the Flames in the preseason poll in the Horizon League picked third. Yeah, very young team. Very, very young team. We joked in the pregame how Ty Odiasi was the only player left that he inherited. It's a lot of work, though, to rebuild the program, mm -hmm. Andy. It takes time. doesn't happen in one year, two years, three years. This is a long process. I can't believe this is year seven for Porter Moser. 
And we looked at each other when we looked at the stats and said, seven years. Boy. Seems like just yesterday. Feel very fortunate to have been doing games here since his first year and to see where the program has gone to go from the Horizon League to the Valley and then be picked number three in the preseason poll for the Valley. Ooh, great job. So Lucas Williamson will pick up that personal foul. He'll be his first. Tayo Diasi is back in. Ramblers doubling up, doubling up the Flames here. 22 to 11. 10 26 remains in the first. And inside Odiasi. Seems like there's always a double team coming for him. Baseline to baseline pass. Dixon didn't settle for the shot that time. And an offensive foul coming up on Dikembe Dixon. There were about four white shirts on Dixon. And mm -hmm. he continued to go to the basket it, it just shows you that they're they're having a difficult time yeah. um, and you can't just play one-on-one -on -one basketball and expect to win every single game and they're I, having some issues you know JD I get why by Dixon feels the way he feels about you know being back in the rhythm already and Ingram drains the long three 25 11 Ramblers in front the reason I say that J.D. is because before the knee injury last year, Dixon was averaging 22 points and six rebounds. Actually, almost seven rebounds. But it goes back to, to the chemistry because when you play only 10 games and Steve McLean had all these freshmen starting last year, those guys had a chance to play the entire season. Mm -hmm. They know each other. They've got a feel for each other. Well, Dixon doesn't have that feel. And he's a very ball dominant player. He likes to score. It's hard to get in that rhythm and find that comfort level with your teammates. Another Flames turnover. And Steve McClain is going to call a timeout here. He's going to take a 30 second timeout here to get things organized. Small, but intimate. I mean, the fans are right on us, as you can probably hear in the background. We apologize in advance. <laughs> I can't tell them what to say. Not I can only control what, what we say. Correct. So if something bleeds over, we apologize, but it's a fired up crowd. What a great look inside. Probably the first bucket, but Ingram on the assist. <laughs> it's so funny as we've spent so much time talking about Crutwig and Williamson and Custer. Dante Ingram probably is the best player on yeah. the team. And he was player of the week last week. And he hasn't even gotten a mention, but he's off to a great start this year. Nice move there by Odiasi. The senior from Glenwood, averaging nearly 10 points a game. We talked to Coach McLean about him because Odiasi, all he was known as is a shot blocker and a rebounder, but certainly contributing offensively now. What a little pass inside. Towns finished. Frontwig with some great, great vision. That's about the fourth time they've burned the flames with that backdoor cut. And the Ramblers up to 16 points in their lead, 29-13. Dixon with a double team near steal by Williamson. Nice little backdoor pass there. Block can't finish. And Ingram there for the rebound. Now Towns tripped up a little bit. Custer has got it. Runs the baseline. Almost traveled with the ball. A little indecision, but was able to keep that dribble. Ten on the shot clock. Another backdoor play. Steve McLean's got to find someone that's going to actually watch the basketball, watch their watch their guy they're defending. But, I mean, great great job by Loyola to see that weakness in the Flames' defense and continue to exploit it. Bowen, a wild shot miss. Frontwick there to clean the glass. Ahead it comes to Custer. He finds Williamson. Spot up three. It's good. So Williamson, a brand new career high of 14 points. So there you see Lucas Williamson, 14 points all here in the first half, a brand new career high. He had 11 points in the win against Samford. And we still have seven minutes to go in the first half. It's hard to have scripted a better start for the Ramblers. 11 assists to one turnover. They're doing such a great job this year being unselfish offensively and moving the basketball. And then we go to UIC. 
three assists to 10 turnovers. Mm. That's hard to do, Andy, to go almost 13 minutes and have three assists on offense. And there's another turnover. Towns inside. That pass was knocked out of bounds, and it went off Crutwig and out. So the Flames will have it. And as we were talking to Porter Moser before the game today, they celebrate assists. That's something that they, they teach. They do that. And I've never heard this before. They actually chart how a guy responds running back after he turns the ball over. They call those character plays. Yes. Hey, whatever it takes to motivate the guy, right? Absolutely. And Adi with that high arcing shot high off the window. But is fouled by Lucas Williamson. That'll be his second personal foul. And Adi will head to the free throw line. I think we might be seeing plan B here by UIC. It's mm -hmm. just to take the ball to the basket and kind of see what happens. Uh, that might be their only course of action because they're not playing good enough defense, Andy, to get that transition game going. And that's the strength of the Flames. They've got a lot of really talented, young, fast players. But, and they're at their best when they're on the run, and you got to give credit to Loyola. They prevented almost everything from a fast break standpoint. So Williamson will take a seat. Darius Avery will make his first appearance of the year. Grab with the rebound on the 0 for 2 trip for Adi. And here is Avery, number 10 in white, into Crutwick. Nice spin move there and using glass. Four for the big fella, 36-13. Ramblers in front. But Darius Avery out of Arlington, Tennessee. Had some shoulder surgery in the offseason and now good enough to come back and play. And that one banks home. 23-2 run over the last six minutes for the Ramblers. Matthews now with five points. And now Avery. Nice little duck under move and score. Everything's working today, Andy, for Loyola. That, that was my move back in the day. Did you know that? When you're, when you're a six-foot uh, post player, <laughs> you better know the pump fake. That was six feet your program height or your actual height? Um, that's what I was listed as. Gotcha. Charge is scored right there by Darius Avery. He's making his presence felt early. Yes, he is. Good minutes coming off the bench. Their bench is, is very strong. And, it, you know, and it's funny, without Richardson, a lot of guys are getting chances. And I don't know if Porter Moser even thought that the bench guys would respond the way they have since Richardson went down with the injury. And the thing that he told us, and kind of speaking to the character of a Ben Richardson, a senior, who has seen some valuable playing time in his final year going by the boards here. He said, but hey, you know what, Coach? Said it's early enough in the year, you might be able to find somebody else, and when I get back, we're going to be that much deeper. Nice little hang move there by Avery. That one blocked back to him, though. Yeah, good job by UIC finally rotating over and cutting off that backdoor pass. And now a three by Bowen is missed, and Avery there for the rebound. Custer. Jackson. Nice spin move there. Tried to use the rim as a defender. And the ball is out of bounds. It'll be to Loyola with 5.02 to go in the half. Jackson has really sharp moves on the post. When you're undersized like that and you play in the paint, you really got to have quickness. And he spins that first spin off the block as fast as anyone I've seen in the Valley. And the thing about him, too, is he, he uses the, the rim. Yeah, he knows the angles really well. You're absolutely right. Just checking the shot clock here to make sure it was right. And it is. Five minutes to go in this first half. All Ramblers. Crutwig step out two is long. And Bowen there for the rebound. Let's go, get low. Cam Satterwhite in also, 23 and white. His first appearance. Odiasi off the double team. And the back door closed that time as Avery got a hand on it. Awkward looking shot there by a blunt. No good. And Crutwig takes the board. Jackson to a wide open Avery. Timeout UIC. They got to talk this over. Another timeout right there. I'm telling you, UIC, there's just not an awareness 
on defense. There have been so many open looks by the Ramblers. No surprise. They're shooting 60% and then 6 of 8 from 3. So everything's working this afternoon. And Steve McLean has one timeout remaining for the rest of the game. Matthews forcing the issue. Scores it. And a foul. So count the hoop. And the foul to Cam Satterwhite. That'll be his first. So Matthews now with seven. And looks to make it eight here at the free throw line. Choke now in. Satterwhite out. Matthew Loyola. You just got to keep the intensity. Well, I can't wait to see what this team does in the Valley. It's a toss-up this year. It really is. I yep. mentioned before that they were number three in the preseason rankings. You know, you got Northern Iowa, you've got Missouri State, Loyola. Bradley can be pretty good this year. But right now, if Loyola can play offense like this and be as unselfish as they've been today, this is a team that definitely will be in the conversation this year in the Valley. No question about it. And Jackson. Good body control there. But another assist. 44-17 Loyola here in the first. Hardy going in. And a nice bucket there from Marcus Hardy, his first points. This is the type of game that the Ramblers needed after that Boise State loss, which again was their fifth game in eight days, their third different time zone. They look just tired physically, mentally, playing against Boise State. And Boise's very good as They're well. They're very good, yep. But you come back home, you rest, you have a couple of good days of practice. You're facing a team that you know you're a little better than. And this is how a team should play. Mm -hmm. A team that doesn't have as many strengths as the Ramblers. Avery's baseline shot too strong. And now Adi all the way in. High Archer's best rebound gathered in by nobody yet. Custer had it and lost it. And now Matthews lining up a three and hitting. And Porter Moser says, listen, guys. We got a big lead. Let's let's focus again here. One thing about uh, Porter Moser, he is not complacent. And winning that assist battle, that, that, that's beautiful basketball to watch. And there's the big number, 12-2 as far as the turnovers go. For the Flames. Just turning the ball over a lot. 21 in back-to-back -back games against Kentucky and Troy. You get it against Kentucky. It's an athletic team and very sure. long. But not against Troy. Nice inside pass once again, and Kretwig, the beneficiary. And that's, that's one thing that UIC, I think, if they could do it again, Andy, they would change the schedule. This is probably, that was probably too tough to play all those road games and go down to Kentucky and then Troy for a team this young. I mean, they need the practice time together, and when you're on the road like that, you just can't get it. And that was one thing we were talking with Coach McLean about on Friday. Was you had that fine line, that balance between trying to get a young team ready to kind of simulate what it's going to be like in a conference tournament, but yet you're always prepping for another team, not prepping for what you need to work on. And when you're experienced and you have a lot of seniors and juniors playing prominent mm -hmm. roles, you can do that. But when you're primarily playing sophomores, freshmen, redshirt sophomore, it's hard to do. Custer wide open. And does not miss. J.D., kind of to your point there, I mean, UIC is now one of six programs in D1 to begin the year with three or fewer upperclassmen. This is a 12-man roster featuring six sophomores, three freshmen, one junior, and two seniors. Now, hopefully, because you want basketball in the city of Chicago to be great, hopefully that pays off down the road. But there are no quick fixes in basketball. There's not. Bruno Skokna coming off the bench, hitting a big shot there. It really takes time to get a program the way you want it. And even when you have it set up, there will be a year or two where you take a step back. But I think Loyola has been one building consistently the right way, Andy, up and up and up. And, and this year is going to be exciting. You can see the product on the floor today. It's going to be a big year. Big steal there by Bowen. We're under a minute to go until halftime. And ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Flames. Andre Jackson will come back into the game. 
And Kretwig will take a seat. Twenty-one on the shot clock. And now to Robinson. And oh, we got a foul on the floor. And that'll go against Marcus Towns. That'll be his first. So if you're Steve McLean right now, you're looking for small sections of time where your team outplays Loyola. I think you have to run. They're, ju they're just not running, but they can't run because they can't stop the Ramblers. They can't stop them on defense, and that's the problem. I guess you take it possession by possession, and I would say at this point, down 30, make that 28. Whatever you came into the game thinking you wanted to do, I might just scrap it. Yeah. Try something else. Plan B. Under 10 seconds to go until halftime. All Ramblers in the first half. Custer had that shot in a race by Odiasi. And a shot will not be taken at the buzzer. That'll do it for half number one here at the Gentile Arena. And a standing ovation. And well deserved for the Loyola Ramblers as they head to the locker room. Very good man, good man, good coach here. And, uh, you know, Porter's going to probably, I'd say, catch him. Mm -hmm. He might catch him before this year's over. You're right. Back underway we go here in the second half. Ramblers have the ball. And it'll be Crutwig. With some dribbling ability. What can he do? And now Ingram saw a seam. And that one a little short. Crutwig bounced it off his fingertips and out of bounds. Don't give me any ideas, Andy. <laughs> That's probably what Porter's saying right now. Hey, on now. Don't show me that you can dribble. But he he is a he is a skilled big man. And we mentioned before about how the body's going to change from year one to year two. He mm -hmm. came in here at 290 pounds. He's down to 260. You know, it's hard to, when you lose all that weight, sometimes you lose strength. So now you, he's going to get another full year in their off-season conditioning and weight program. And you watch next year when we're sitting here watching Crutwood play, he's going to look even stronger and in better shape than he does right now. First points of the second half, first points of the game for Goblin Bowen. And Marcus Towns into Crutwick. Turns to face against Odiasi. A little left-hand hook shot is missed. But a good move nonetheless. And a steal. Ramblers have some numbers. And Ingram tried to take it all the way himself. But he is fouled on the plate. I was just about to say it was a much better start to the second half for, for UIC. And then they turn it over. And there's Dante Ingram almost finishing it. But still goes to the, well, no, still first team foul, non shooting foul. 52 26, Ramblers lead. That one floated out to Andre Jackson. And now Custer will run the floor. Custer, five assists and, no, and one turnover in that first half. And you look at over his last five games, it's now 32 assists. To eight turnovers. Yeah, this, this is the best stretch that he's had, you know, since he transferred here a couple of years ago. He was a good player for them last year. But now you can really tell that, that the offense runs through him. And uh, he's done an excellent job, you know, protecting the basketball. He can score. He can get to the basket. But the way he's been distributing the ball and then not turning it over, that has Loyola very happy about his play. I just ruined a streak of 15 straight free throws made here at home by Custer, but well, you jinxed him, Andy. He'll Way start a new one. Yeah. Way to go. I was just talking about his assist. I wasn't talking about his shooting. 53-26, Ramblers in front. And now Dixon. Odiasi from the free throw line. Too strong. Kretwig there for the rebound. Cameron Kretwig talking about the ability but he's showing to score at 7.1 points per game. He's also grabbing six rebounds a game and is eighth in Illinois State High School Association history with nearly 1,300 rebounds in his career. And a nice pass inside for East Custer. Great finish, too. Boy, there's a, been a lot. Think of the great players, the great big men in the state of Illinois. Yeah. And for Crutwig to rank that highly on the all-time list, that says something. And a foul coming up. Custer absorbed the blow. And he will get the foul called against him his first. 
Yeah. When you look at Custer and Richardson together, and it's like a separated at birth kind of thing. They're, they're, they're kind of <laughs> following each other around a yeah. little bit. They you know, obviously know each other very well. From their days growing up in Kansas. Yep. Oh. Kind of a lazy inbounds pass there stolen. Well, that's a seen it all now. And a hammering duck there by Jackson. Fifty-seven twenty-six Ramblers. Odiasi in trouble. Ball on that glass, taken out of there by Jackson, then restolen. Bowen. Forced to change his shot and still got it to go. That's good a finish. That's a great shot. Yeah, that's a really good finish, but not to hit on the point too often, but boy, they UIC just turns the ball over so much, Andy. I mean, how can you get anything going when the ball gets turned over in a variety of ways? I mean, dribbling the ball at the floor, taking the ball out of bounds and turning it over. That's a freshman making those moves against Ty Odiasi. And we talked about Lucas Williamson maybe benefiting the most, and there's an offensive foul to shoulder into Towns. Matthews picks up his second, but to further that point, with Richardson out of the starting lineup, Crutwig went in. And now you can see he's playing with so much confidence. And what I like, too, is you know Richardson, when they go to timeout, you'll see he's one of the first guys on the floor to congratulate teammates, to pump them up. Oh! And a foul coming up there. <laughs> that would have brought the house down. Would have been a poster shot right there for Towns. So Dixon will pick up the personal. It'll be his second. And Matthews kind of leaned over. Saying it was his fault that he allowed his man to get so free. That's about the tenth time this afternoon that a Rambler has been wide open on that backdoor cut. So Marcus Towns missed the first free throw. Big big numbers for Marcus Towns there. You saw them on the screen. Over 14 points a game. The transfer from Fairley Dickinson. They are just thrilled with, with his play up to this point. Five and a half rebounds, nearly three assists a game. And he missed them both. Came in as a 75% free throw shooter. That might be the only thing the Ramblers aren't doing well here this afternoon. Five of ten from the free throw line. Now make that five of 11. And that does not fall. And two flames hit the deck. Towns nifty little pass into Jackson. Hangs and scores. At the other end, Michael Diggins. Yeah, I was going to say he never got up, and he, he was waving off, waving off the help. He got he got hit in the lip or the mouth yeah. somewhere. Well, there were three flames not moving, not running down the floor to help on defense. Ingram flying in for that rebound. And Jackson traveled. And that'll send us to an official's timeout here on the floor with 15.48 left to go here in the second half. 61-28, Loyola. Got about transition defense, trying to get back and stopping fast break opportunities. Well, this team has certainly done that. UIC doesn't have a single point on the fast break. That's, a, that's incredible for a team that really is built to run with the speed. Loyola has outscored UIC 8-0 UIC on the fast break. And it's been a really clean game by the Ramblers, Andy. Only six personal fouls. Five in the first half. Only one so far here in the second half. Very clean. So UIC, they can't get anything going offensively from their sets. And they can't get to the line either. And Dixon with a long range three that just comes up short off the iron. And now Towns. Another backdoor pass and it's wide open again. It's going to be there all day. Nice vision by Crutwig, but that's good. A Andy, that is going to be open all day. So when you get the ball at the point, look, because that cut's going to be open. And Adi going one on five. Now with four points. How about this? Cameron Crutwig, eight points, five rebounds, six assists, and no turnovers from your big man. 
Are you saying we could be possibly getting close to triple-double territory? We could mess man? around and get a triple-double. <laughs> Ingram, long-range three, no good. And Dixon there for the rebound. It's like when the guy hits the double, the triple, and the single, you're thinking, oh, okay, we got a cycle maybe in baseball. And a quick little turnaround jumper is good by Adi, who scored the last four points for the Flames. 63-32, Loyola. Towns in no particular hurry. Now goes down the lane. Ingram with eight to shoot. Williamson got bumped off of his spot by Diggins. Yeah, Diggins bailed him out. It was good defense right there by UIC. Yeah. And we mentioned this before. I mean, the one thing, you could look at this Loyola offense and say the one thing they might not have is that player, when the shot clock is winding down, can just go one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, UIC's all one-on-one. -on -one. That's what they do, mostly one-on-five. But Loyola doesn't have that. That was Milton Doyle. So it was a good job by the Flames. They get the shot clock down, but bailed out by a foul. Custer back in. Tried to feed it inside. It was blocked away and knocked out of bounds, but Loyola will keep possession. And if you're looking on your screen, you see those little yellow lines under each of the team's names. Those signify timeouts left. And Steve McLean forced to call three in the first half. Oh, nice little touch there by... Andre Jackson. People always ask me, how can you tell that Loyola, outside of the wins and losses, how do you tell a program is really getting better? I say, well, two things. Number one, if you look at Porter Moser right now, by the scores table on the opposite side from where we're broadcasting, his jacket is still on. Could we've be got, some kind of record. We've got 13, 16 left to go. Seven years ago, the jacket was off by the first media timeout. And seven years ago, he would call the first timeout <laughs> and about a minute in. Not anymore. And Andre Jackson brings another their feet here at Gentile. With an opportunity for an add one. Look at that. Not even sweating right now. That jacket's still on. Back in the day, Andy. It's in the second row. I mean, after the back in the day. First time out. Takes it off. Slams it down. <laughs> Timeout. Not anymore, though. Times are changing. So Jacob Wiley will come in for the first time to get Robinson for the Flames. So there, Jackson with his 18 points to lead the way. Make it 19 now. So Jackson will sit. Christian DeGrom will come in. And look at this ball fake. Another one. But he's just so skilled. So Loyola got 102 against UNC Wilmington. They've got 68 right now with 12.57 left. Not sure if they'll get to 102, but this will probably end up being one of their higher scoring games. They dropped 96 on Eureka on November 12th. This will end somewhere in the 80s or mm -hmm. 90s. I would agree. I think we got a bench warning issued to the Flames. I kind of thought I saw one of the officials over there pointing toward the bench. And Darius Avery back in, playing his first game of the year. Came in and scored four early points. Grabbed a rebound and dished out an assist as well, making his mark. A little backdoor action in the ground. He'll throw it up off the rim. No good. Rebound by Avery is missed. And here comes Diggins out of the pile for the Flames. That's a spin move there. In control off glass, no good, but a foul coming up. And that's their game. I mean, so few times that's been available to UIC, but when they do run, you see they have the athletes to make something happen in the mm -hmm. open floor, but they haven't had the chance, and that's a testament to how well Loyola's played offensively and how well they protected the basketball all afternoon long. Diggins, a freshman from Las Vegas, missed the first. That was his first attempt of the year. Had a career-high five against Troy and played the most minutes he'd ever played, 20. And they go for two. Odiasi, though, with those long arms, got it back and put it in. 
Only four points for Odiasi. Oh boy, he has something to deal with inside. Yeah, USC is going to pressure now. Let's see what the Ramblers can do to break it. And now Williamson will bring it across. Try to blow by Dixon. Stab will hand it off to the ball handler. Good job. 12 minutes to go here in the second. Defense extending out of the timeline. Custer kept the dribble, finds the three-point shooter. Scope now, that's too strong. And here comes Dixon on the fly. The Euro step or two, and that one missed. Custer, long lead pass to Scope now. Nice catch in rhythm. Extra pass made to Williamson. Set up for a three, too strong. Avery had it, and I think he knocked it off a UIC player. He did. So good work inside there by Avery to knock it off the UIC player. And the Ramblers will have it. Stadium, for additional information, visit artmadness.com. 68 to 34. That is not a misprint. That has been all Ramblers here at Genteel. Andy Mazur, Jeff Dickerson back with you here. And the Ramblers have the ball. Avery forcing the issue, hangs and missed the shot, but he's fouled. And that is going to go against Wiley. And now he gets his name in the paper with a foul. <laughs> Not the way he wanted it. No, I know. I'm still laughing about your Euro step line for uh, Dikembe Dixon. Did you uh, like that one? Then? That was actually very good because I could tell uh, by the time he got to us at half court. I could tell you he was going to shoot that ball no matter what. That ball was not going to be passed. So, Avery at the line. And converts on one of two. Good first impression here from Adarius Avery. Five points. And now Dixon running through the lane one, once again. And a foul coming up on Loyola. Now, if you're Loyola, mm -hmm. you want to close this out strong, Andy. Yeah. You want to keep playing good defense, keep running your offense, don't get stuck in the mud, and don't get sloppy because obviously it's going to be very loose from here on out from UIC because they have to be because mm -hmm. they're down by such a large number. But take care of the basketball, beat the token pressure, and play good defense. And I think everyone will be happy with how the game is gonna gonna wind down the final 10 and change. Towns across the line. And some guys getting some minutes here for Porter Moser's group. Williamson faking on the three. Now finds the open man Skokna. Backs up for that three. Missed. Avery had it. Robinson took it away. Good decision by Avery not to foul right there, too. He could have gotten called, but he let it go. Smart move. And here comes Adi. If I'm not mistaken, he scored the last six points. And he has been the offense for the Flames in the last five minutes. The UIC good on five of his last six from the field. Negron inside, got a man in the air. Now we'll give it up. Towns faking on the three. He runs down the lane. Higher shot. No, but a rebound and a two-hand jam by Negron. Cleaning up the garbage right there. And I like the patience that the Ramblers showed to Andy on that possession. No need to rush it. Get the best possible look. And a blocking foul. Call it inside. Uh, Christian Negron. It's a tough call by any official. That is so hard to make that judgment call, Andy, as to what's an offensive foul, what's a charge. Eh, usually it goes 50-50 either way. Mm -hmm. Can we get a replacement? So Wiley will go to the free throw line here. Freshman from Houston, Texas. Actually scored his first collegiate points in their last game against Troy. So Castro will come back for Skokna. Here's the numbers on the year for Wiley. Good on one of two. UIC has really expanded the 
recruiting pool. Players from, as you mentioned before, Las Vegas, Houston, Canada, uh, they Ireland even mm -hmm. for Jordan Blunt. So they have definitely uh, looked to recruit not just the Chicago area, but certainly going outside it with Stephen Clay. Clint Robinson from Jamaica. And McGraw missed that shot from the elbow. I hear Montego Bay beautiful this time of year. Oh, yeah. It's been pretty beautiful here in Chicago, too. We can't complain too much, <laughs> I'm eh? not, no. Dixon missing on that one. And Avery there for the rebound. Good job to feel the pressure behind him and give it up. You'll be missing this weather in about a week from now, trust yeah. me. Maybe in a couple of days. Custer, again, not in any real hurry here. We've under nine minutes to play in the second half. Inside to Towns, back to Avery. That awkward-looking shot missed. And the rebound is captured by Diggins. I think Avery was surprised he had such a good look right there. Sometimes they'll sneak up on you, Andy. <laughs> You're not expected to be so wide open. And you got to take him when you have him. Yeah. There's a miss and a foul. And Brown picks up his second. UIC five of his last six from the floor. The Ramblers one of their last nine. And Adi good on the free throw. He has 11 points. So a couple of the starters will come back in. As Ingram and Kretwig are back. And Adi good on a pair. Odiasi will get Robinson for the Flames. 30-point lead here for the Ramblers, 71-41. Gives uh, This will give Loyola some nice momentum going into the game at Florida mm -hmm. on December 6th. And then they've got Norfolk State, then at Milwaukee. And the Valley games begin with Missouri State and Evansville. It's going to be a great year this season in the Missouri Valley Conference. And I can't wait to see how the Ramblers do. I'll tell you what, they come out with the intensity that they came out with here today. They're going to be all right. Getting some good balance scoring. Kretwick had his pocket picked. A little too much dribbling there. No look to Dixon. He missed it. Got it back. And scores from a tough angle. If the Ramblers play this way, they can hang with almost anybody. I agree. In the Valley, a, a, a tough league. Nice little pass inside. Custer had it blocked off the rim, though. Ross Kretwick was looking for his seventh assist. <laughs> Wiley makes that shot. And timeout. Timeout called by the Rambler. Trail. We had one tie score, and that was it. Because the home team has uh, turned the ball over only six times. Has shot... You know, 60% for most of the game. Now they're down to 53.8%. You're going to have four guys, Andy, end this game in double figures for scoring for Loyola. So the defense sagged in. And, and a little button hook run there by Jackson. He gets rewarded with a touchdown pass. And now Dixon shedding his defender and scoring. The kid can score. There's no doubt about it. Oh, he, he definitely can score. He was the Horizon League freshman of the year two years ago. And he was scoring a lot last year at the time of his ACL injury. And just, they have to figure out a way to be more efficient on offense and actually do more than just ISO plays and find a way to cover the backdoor pass. So far, they have not been able to do that today. Williamson ran in to Dikembe Dixon, trying to bait the foul, but... None coming. So another timeout here on the floor with 6.45 remaining here in the second half. All you can go to LoyolaRamblers.com or call 773-508-WOLF. Santa's got some touch. Yeah, nice effort by Santa. Not easy to shoot jump shots wearing that uh, heavy suit and beard. He's got reindeer lag. I'm flying in. Dixon looking inside. Odiasi. Got his own rebound eventually, but missed the shot as he hits the deck. And the Ramblers come out there with a rebound. Break his ankles already. Get him, Lucas. Go do that. Break his own leg. 
Custer seeing a seam. The cutter is Ingram and a dunk. Vision by Clayton Custer right there. He was zigging and zagging his way in the lane. I was wondering where that was gonna, how that was gonna end up. A nice cut by Ingram. Easy basket. Dixon will give that one up. Diggins missed the three. Strong rebound by Ingram. And now he'll bring it up. Custer into Crutwick. Oh. Williamson was not expecting the pass from the big man. And it goes out of bounds. So Matthews and Blunt are back in. And Marcus Towns has returned. For Lucas Williamson. And Adi also has checked in for UIC. And he'll bring it across the line here with 5.35 left to go. Kemba Dixon not exactly happy no. about being removed from this game. As no. the three is drained by Matthews. I think you and I saw the same thing out of the corner of our eye. The towel thrown against the bench and then made its way out of the floor. Yeah, the old towel throw. That's usually not uh, when things are going well. The towel does not get thrown. Been there, done that. Well, it's been a frustrating day, I think, for everyone with mm -hmm. UIC. They just, they were never really in it because they did not value the basketball. They got off to a really sloppy start. You get down 75 to 50 against this Loyola team, and because they're so well-balanced scoring and are so disciplined on defense, that's an almost impossible deficit to dig yourself out of. Matthews, a deep three, no good. Custer there to clean the glass. And now Dante Ingram will bring it across. Another backdoor look and another basket. I love the body control for Andre Jackson. We talked about him understanding the angles. It's not easy to be falling out of bounds yeah. and flip the ball back over your head perfectly on the glass for the score. And a near steal, but a foul coming up. Two shots. I think that's going to go on Jackson. Nope, Custer picks up the foul as second. About to have a uh, wholesale substitution here almost for Loyola after this free throw. A line change action. And yeah, they're lined up at the scorer's table. Adi's free throw is good. And here they come. Man, a well-deserved hand for those starters who are taking a seat probably for the final time. Yeah, very good game. For everyone walking off the floor, I, mean, I just think that, you know, Custer and his minutes out there bring such a balance to the offense and such a calming influence. And then, you know, Towns didn't have the type of numbers he's had in some of the games this year, but impressive nonetheless. Well, that these easy baskets have been, you ask me, three weeks from now, what I remember about this game against UIC, there have been so many easy opportunities for the Ramblers, whether it's taking the ball out of bounds, backdoor cuts, there just hasn't been much resistance put up by UIC. Howdy got up on that one and hammered it down. No, you're right. I mean, the home run play's been there. The backdoor cuts have been there all day. Avery trying to get it to Satterwhite. It goes out of bounds. Uh, we'll take our final official's timeout of the afternoon 79 54 loyola leads 340 wednesday december 6th they return to genteel on saturday december 9th one week from today when they'll take on norfolk state at three o'clock for more information or tickets visit loyolaramblers.com or call 773-508-WOLF this will make that trip to florida a lot much happier trip oh yeah to gainesville for loyola really wanted to see how Porter Moser, how his team responded after a disappointing loss to Boise State. They're a better team than the score indicated, but they were kind of out of gas at the end of their long road trip. And this is exactly what, what they wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not let UIC run early, played excellent transition defense, and, and they could score. I mean, they've got a lot of guys on this team, Andy, capable of scoring double digits on any given night. Group rebound there taken by Ingram. The lone starter still on the floor for Loyola. 
Lawrence as the clock winding down under three minutes to go. Darius Avery in there for the first time this year. It's shoulder surgery in the offseason. And that one just off the fingertips of LeGrand and out of bounds. And here comes Carson Shanks. We'll get Ingram. Shanks from Apple Valley, Minnesota. And transferred in from North Dakota. Graduate student. Well, his first ever seven footer. You see? Now he's spoiling you with all these big guys, Porter Moser. <laughs> and a foul by Shanks, a hard foul. But you know, though, it, it is a good point to really kind of bring up again when we talk about Cameron Crutwig, who gets a lot of minutes down the starting lineup mm -hmm. as a freshman big man. In past years, Loyola always had excellent athletes. They had good shooters. We talk about the commitment to defense, which is always there. But whenever they would face a team in the Valley with a great low post player, they were in trouble. Yep. That's something that always gave them difficulty. If they can now kind of introduce that element of having a big man to this offense and this team, think about from a matchup perspective, Andy, how much better off they're going to be this season. I mean, you look at an in-state rival in Bradley with Koch Barr, who's nearly seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. Kind of an Odiasi type defensive minded first but yet changes and alters shots Satterway will fire one up off the back iron no good but an offensive foul coming up and I think that's going to go on Shanks as well and he'll get his name in the paper well he's uh he's making the most of these minutes yeah a couple of fouls you don't practice hard every single day and work your butt off when you get out there mm -hmm. afraid to do anything I mean <laughs> you know, he's going to go out there and play hard yeah, to kind of further your point, too, about Crutwig, I mean, this is not a plotting type of center. This is a guy that's got some skill and, and at 260 pounds, obviously a lot more mobile than he was at 290. And I don't think they would recruit that type of center because, mm -hmm. you know, they, that doesn't fit in this style of offense. I mean, you have to have, if you're going to have a big guy, he's got to be able to pass. That's number one, which Crutwig can do. Yes, he, he can. got to score. You got to be able to shoot occasionally from the outside. Aside from the good defense down low and the rebound, you got to have a guy that can pass with this offense. Kreller, right now, leads the team with seven assists. Now Skokna. Shot clock down to 10. And the Shanks sent a little flip shot good. Two points, two fouls. Just how he drew it up. Absolutely right. And there's another steal. Satterwhite, Robinson ahead of him. He thunder jams it with two hands. Nice elevation by Cam Satterwhite. That was quick off the floor with the stuff. And the explanation point has been dotted. Matthews inside will be fouled. So Satterwhite picks up the foul. At first, I thought they were saying 32. I'm like, oh my God, Shanks just has three fouls in three minutes of play. But it was on Satter Satterwhite. Getting his money's worth, Andy. You've talked about him a lot now. See, he, uh -huh. knows, he knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. And that's a graduate student, my friend. That, that man has, <laughs> has mastered the art of higher education. He knows what's up. Jake Boffman and Nick Denardi have come in. Boffin from Bloomington. And Denardi from Palos Park in for the first time. And then besides a couple of sloppy moments here in this second half, I think Porter Moser is going to be real happy overall yes. with what he saw here. Shanks with a nice feed inside, and man, Denardi's upset with himself he didn't finish there. And the final minute of this one. Nice no look inside by Matthews. And Boss got his first basket of the game. Substitution. Timeout here by Porter Moser. And they'll get Dylan Bain into the game. And Darius Avery will leave.
Those are good timeouts. You know, the rolling timeout. Just, all you want to do is get a guy in. You want to stop the play just to get him in. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good rule that they have here in college basketball. Satterwhite tried to get around Matthews, and Matthews checked him. Third on him. And one in bonus time here for the Ramblers. So as mentioned, it's Florida next, and then Norfolk State here at Genteel a week from today. And then at Milwaukee, and for the Flames up next, Wisconsin Parkside. And then a game with DePaul at the Pavilion, and then they'll take on Dartmouth. That'll be a very smartly played game, I have a feeling. I, I, I agree with you. I think we'll be wowed by Dartmouth's uh, <laughs> offensive concepts. Exactly right. Lots of study went into them. <laughs> Final 35 seconds of this one. Matthews, a little circus shot in the lane, missed. Satterway grabs that rebound aggressively. Now the shot at game clock. Actually, the shot clock just went off. And the fans of Gentile rise to their feet. They saw a dominating performance by the Loyola Ramblers here this afternoon. No shots will be taken here. And that will finish the game. 85-61 is your final. And the Ramblers move to 8-1 and one on the year. And they drop the Flames to 2-4. and four. Team